so we've got uh, our priest cards. Prince Tawinja? Tawin Tawinja? I don't know. I can't read. Um, or Talanji, Talanji. Prince Tawin. Uh, 8 mana, 7 5. Summon all minions from your hand that didn't start in your deck. What the hell? So, that's really powerful because that'll, like, if you replicate something, which we're going to get to talk about later, if there's a replicate card in the set, that, um, that will be a minion that didn't start in your hand. Um, basically, I don't know how many good ways there are to add minions to your hand, but I'm sure there's a, like, I know there's a bunch of OTKs with this card, like Zoa makes it so it didn't start in your hand, which is insane. Um, I don't know what happens, so if I go, like, something and Youthful Brewmaster it, does that count as starting in my deck? Is uh, that, like, at, like if that's a new entity, that's insane. Um, I think it's all about if that specific card did. So if yeah. the card was in your original shuffle up, then yes. If yeah. it's a copy of a card in your original shop shuffle up, then it would be affected by the battle cry. Yeah, so I think this is a really powerful effect. I know there's some OTKs with it, and the honest answer um the honest answer is I have no idea how to evaluate this card, and this is the first card I've honestly said this with. I'm gonna say it's a a seven star card and I feel like it's probably either in one of two directions where I'm very wrong. It's either a two star card or a ten star card. But I really don't know how to evaluate this card. I know there's a bunch of powerful things you can do with it, but I don't really know what those powerful things are and I don't know how good those are going to be. I just know that this card has a bunch of really, really powerful text on it. Yeah, it, the battle cry is crazy powerful I, I just uh my question is is how consistently you can make it valuable um it's not well statted you know so the battle cry is basically what you're playing this card it's an eight mana spell effectively in a lot of ways and i i, I don't see a lot of great tools to make sure it's nuts um, I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed by the card, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I think it requires a lot of setup, and I think the combo decks that Priest have now are probably better. I'm going to give this guy a five for now, and I can't wait to be called an idiot later, but... You know what? Right. I'm gonna help you out. You're an idiot. I just, yeah. I need to get that out of the system. I mean, I probably Jeez. deserve it. <laughs> So I said seven, you said five. What do you think, JT? All right. Uh, this card's like absolutely insane. Um, there is so many different ways to get cards in your hand that didn't start there. Um, cards that come to mind are Holy Water. Kill one of your opponent's minions, you get a copy in your hand. Zola. Um, we have the, the... There's a probe card, right, that lets you discover a card from your opponent's deck. Yep. It's not a card that started in your hand. Um, Ysera creates minions that do not start in your hand. Um, Firefly tokens do not start in your deck. Any Anything that creates a token that you have in your hand to play later does mm -hmm. not start in your deck. I think it's very easy to put cards in your deck to make this card extremely powerful. Because honestly, at a 7-5 for 8, I'm not too sad because it's still going to eat a removal spell at 5 health. Um, most stuff is not going to trade into it because 3 and 4 seems to be the magic number. And you're going to get a lot of powerful effect out of the Battle Cry. So I'm going to rate this card a 7 because I don't initially think it has a home. It, this is a card that will have to be built around for sure. But it's really easy to enable this card to do some very powerful things. Okay, let's move on to our other priest card when I find the image on my computer. It's here somewhere, I promise. Okay. I'm going to not try to pronounce this card. It's a 7 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Say that again. Buon Samdi. Okay. <laughs> seven... <laughs> Thank you. 7 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Battle cry. Draw one cost minions from your deck until your hand is full. Um, okay, here's the thing. 
You don't want to play a bunch of one-cost minions and priest. If you try to make me play a zoo deck, I don't want to play any seven drops that aren't like, yeah, that I just don't want to play seven drops. Like, what are you trying to make us do with this card? You want us to play zoo, but you're priest and you don't have like your tools to be good at zoo. You have so many good cards like flame it, but stuff like that. That I just don't see the archetype where this is supposed to work ever working. On the other hand, if we took out what class it was just evaluating the card, 7x7-7, seven seven, seven, draw a bunch of 1-drops, is a really powerful card. It's such a refill, although it's so bad if you ever consider the word fatigue. Um, but like decks that play this obviously don't care about fatigue. They're trying to kill the opponent. I'm going to give it uh, 6 stars because I think the card is doing something powerful, but I have a feeling that this card's powerfulness is as far as it gets, and I don't think it's ever actually going to do anything. Um, yeah, this card is a little bit of an awkward situation. I mean, like, it's pretty clear that it wants to work with the... I'm going to mention it now because I think it's impossible to talk about this card without talking about the spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, The spirit... Uh, when you have a friendly minion die, it shuffles a one-cost copy of it back into your deck. So, that is obviously where Blunt Somdi is trying to be, like, utilized the most. Um, the problem is, without Spirit, I think it's, like, the card doesn't do anything. It's just, like, a 7-7 seven, seven for 7. That that draws you Northshire Clerics. Um... I think you're correct that, and if it if it's if and someone tried to play aggro, it's probably wrong. One because you're priest, and two because you have a seven drop in your deck. Um, so Spear of the Dead is the only place I land on, and I don't even think it's that good on its own right. So I'm going to give Juan Somdi a mediocre five. Uh, it's a powerful effect, but I don't think it has the tools to make it like see its real potential. But the card has a decent curve. It's not understated, so that helps. I'm uh, I'm looking at Spirit of the Dead, and I'm you know I can't quite evaluate this card yet, but I think it will be hard to get a lot of value off of that card, and therefore, unless you're building a deck full of one drops, this card is going to be a seven mana seven seven a great deal of the time, which I would not play right now. Um, I'm a rated four out of ten. Because I, I could play seven mana seven sevens with no text over this card, I think. I will say, uh, Juan Somdi looks BA though. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, he looks pretty cool, honestly. Yeah. He's got some spirits flying around him. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know. Maybe this card gets better with time um, and they print something else that enables it to be more powerful down the road. But right now, I'm not super, super sold on the seven mana seven seven with like. No text. Tiny little, tiny little bit of upside <laughs> that's actually really bad in fatigue matchups. Yeah. It's also worth noting that unless you have extra mana when you play this card, it's another card that will mill you. Yeah. Or yeah. you don't have enough one drops in your deck. So, you know, worth noting. Mm. All right. Next card Surrender to Madness. Three mana, destroy three of your mana crystals, give all minions in your deck plus two plus two. So it doesn't hit your hand, doesn't hit your board. I know they want us to play Zoo, but what I'm misunderstanding here, I think, is they want us to play a 7-drop that draws all of, all of our 1-drops, but they want us to nuke 3 of our mana. I'm so confused. Yeah. Who who in the design department sat there doing this? Like, This looks like a card that might have been 2 mana at one point, and they were like, don't be silly, that would be way too powerful. I'm not <laughs> sure it would be. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it costs three, so you could play it with Kelliseth, clearly. Great. But, like, I mean, they do a Shadow Ascendant, though, and that card's insane in any Zoo style deck. But, man, I just. Okay, I don't want to play Zoo in, this, in these colors. Or, not in these colors, in this class. I don't want to blow up my Mana Crystals because I'm not stupid. This card's shit. One star. <laughs> so, I get what they were trying to do with this card a little Same. bit. Same. Like, they want you to curve to five, basically, and play this card on, like, turn five or turn six. Reset your mana crystals. 
and still be able to play the minions in your hand, but the ones you peel are now going to be five fives for two, um, or five fives for three, or whatever. The problem is, is destroying three of your mana crystals is bad. <laughs> when you're playing with three mana and your opponent's on eight mana, I don't care what two drop has what buff, you're probably going to die. Uh, I think it's a cool concept. I think Surrender is a really good pun for this card, because that's all anyone will ever do playing it. So it's one star, and bless anybody who tries to make it more than that. Chitty. Did we lose JT? I don't know. I'm getting a feeling we lost JT. Oh, I don't know what happened. My microphone muted itself somehow. <laughs> um, I'm here. Okay, try and tell us what you think of Surrender to Madness. Surrender to Madness, I think, is a two-star card. And let me tell you why. There's Skip. going to be some awesome screenshots <laughs> of druids that have ramped into obscene amounts of mana. And the opponent is going to have, like, three zero. No, they're going to have zero. Ten. Yeah, the opponent's going to go surrender, <laughs> surrender once the druid is at 10. Because so they wanted see, to so surrender. A 5-5 five, five five and a 4-4 four, four in play, you know? Um, if I could give this card zero stars, I would. But because we are on a 1 through 10 scale, we'll give it away. Is, is no one going for the turn 8 play, surrender to Magus Mojo? <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually I mean that doesn't work Mojo costs oh, 6 he... oh Mojo is 6 so it's a turn 9 play it's a turn 9 play either way yeah I got it that's cute you know what I'm making my my vote a 2 because 1 for me is entirely unplayable and I just said something dumb that might work 10% of the time so I'm up to 2 stars now boom you know what? It's playable in meme decks. After all of this talk about all of the ways we can make this card work, I'm going to change my vote from a 1 to a 1. Because this card is shit. <laughs> Next <laughs> card. Akadai Phantasm. 2 mana, 3 2. Okay. Battle Cry this turn, your healing effects deal damage instead. Uh, so on turn 4, it's a 2 mana, 3 2 that deals 2 damage, ignoring. You know, the spells you could play, like one we're going to talk about soon. Um, as weird as it sounds, you could play this card in... Oh, wait, no, never mind, that doesn't work. I was going to say Odd Priest, so you can deal four, but there's a problem with that. Uh, <laughs> I think... So the one thing, you know, this is a battle cry, not an effect, which means you can't, like, resurrect it in Circle or something. Um, I don't think... Any priest decks are going to play, or any current priest decks want to play this in a deck where they want to play Circle of Healing, like that, where they want the Akanai Circle effect. Mm -hmm. But I do see Akanai Phantasm seeing a home in like some tempo, maybe spiteful priest, where this is a powerful effect. And yeah, I think it's actually pretty good in that slot. It's a decent body with a decent effect. It's nothing special, but it's probably okay, and it might... That deck, I believe, needs a couple more 2-drops. I believe it's playing some shitty ones, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the case. This is better than a lot of 2-drops. So yeah, I think it's okay. I'll give it 7, because I think it has a home. Um, I think this card is pretty insane, and that's mainly because they made the Circle of Healing combo now cost 2 mana instead of 4 mana. Like, that that's too. pretty stupid good, right? Uh, in my opinion. like just. I wish I had an air horn. So I could be like, nah. Like, <laughs> it's, really, <laughs> it's really good. So I'm, I love that. And beside that, it, it's just like a solid tempo card. Like, if you're playing Control the Priest, and you have an iffy hand, if your worst play is tempoing out a 2-mana 3-2, I mean, it really could be worse. And it, it is a 4-mana removal spell. Uh, with your hero power, and again, it's, you know, a circle of healing, it could be a, a, a very efficient board clear. And as we were talking about, like, four is a magic number right now for a lot of minions, and circle of healing is perfect for that, so having a two-mana combo that kills four health minions is super good to me. 
Um, now, it, it, it doesn't really have a place in a current Priest deck now. Um, this is something we would definitely be looking at for a future deck or something that gets built after this expansion. But I think this card is very good and aggressively statted, and I hope I get to play it because I also like the art. I'm going to give it an 8. An 8. Jeez. Um, yeah, I think this card's okay. Just the existence of Circle makes it a lot better. Um, I feel like one of the decks that wants some more early game interaction is the Resurrect Priest, but the problem is that this card dilutes your Resurrection Pool, so it doesn't have a home there. Um, I think I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Um, a 2 and a 3-2 on Curb is fine. It's not amazing, but it's not, you know, terrible. You get five stats for two mana, so that's fine. And then on turn four, you get the combo with your hero power. Um, so yeah, I think it's not too bad. Just, like I said, the existence of Circle of Healing, you know, dictates how low I can rate this card. Um, it, it, there's no way it can ever be, like, a five, I think, because Circle dealing four to everything as early as turn two is extremely powerful. Oh, having, having, a, having a four mana AoE on, or, or not four mana, four damage AoE on turn two on is really strong. Is the, um, the new healing spell for, uh, newer healing spell for Priest, the two mana, is that, is that six health to all allied stuff or heal six for all minions? Or that's just your stuff? Are you talking about Divine Him? Divine Him. Yeah. It's, do you, it's Divine restore him. six health to all friendly characters. Okay, then. I was wondering if that... I couldn't remember oh, if that was targeted. Yeah. That would make this card way better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, unfortunate. All right. Um, moot point, then. Next card. Oh. We're talking about next cards? Wow. Oh, I was, I was making a point on, on, on Phantasm, and then my point is now eradicated because Divine Him doesn't target your opponent. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about next card. 12 mana, literally unplayable. Um, great for it's a 7 8 for 12 taunt. Cost one less for each spell you've cast this game. Or this card is insane, a control priest, because that deck plays so many cheap spells. This is actually like a 6 drop, and I think the card's extremely good in that deck. I think it's probably a 9 star card in control priest, or I think it's a 9-star card because it definitely has a, a home in Control Priest, and it potentially also has a home in Resurrect Priest, um, because it's also easy for that deck to cast a lot of spells, and including coins. So, yeah, I'll say this 9-star card is just so powerful. Like, it's easily 5 or 6 mana very, very quickly into the game for a 5 or 6 mana 7-8 taunt, and that's absurd. So, yeah, I think it's a 9-star card. I expect to get frustrated with this card a lot. Yeah, I agree. This card's bonkers. Um, I mean, the... Uh, is it Arcane Giant? Giant? Is that the is that the neutral giant that's so, one less for every spell you played? Yeah. Um, that was so, so easy. This, so this is... <laughs> well, this is a... Uh, very similar to that, obviously. But... The fact that it has taunt gives it so much more room. It's so much better to play on a condition of being behind on board and health for a, uh, a late game control tool. And like you said, Priest so easily cycles through cards with uh, Radiant Elemental and cards like that and being able to just burn through spells. It can make this card very cheap very fast. I'm going to put it on a 9 as well. I expect a lot of control priests to utilize this card. I don't. I mean, I I, I guess clone priest doesn't want to play it, but um, maybe they do. Maybe it's good enough for them. It's not their real plan, but they cycle spells so fast, so easily that this card being two mana isn't ridiculous. So I'm gonna give it a nine. It's super good. Yeah, I mean, like all the giants that get discounted in some way, shape, or form due to uh, like playing a certain kind of spell, a certain kind of card have generally been good. But when you add taunt to the equation, it's like it's much more of like a stabilizer, right? And the fact that it counts for spells, I mean, priest has shadow visions. It's really easy for them to actually knock six to eight mana off this really quickly. And for that reason, I'm gonna rate it 
an 8 out of 10, super duper solid card. Um, not every priest deck's going to play it, I think, but the ones that do are going to get this card to play very quickly, possibly as early as like turn 6, I think. So, I just want to quickly mention some idea I just thought about. So, I, I know we haven't got to the card for Generate yet, but all you all anyone who doesn't know about the card needs to know is it costs zero mana. Um, yep. And we have this. I'm actually wondering how, with Radiant Elementals, and we have Grave Horror for payoff, and we have, a, we have a, three zero mana spells, right? Silence, Regenerate, and uh, Circle in Priest. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when are we going to start just playing Auctioneer and like, um yeah. and just like maybe Mechathone Priest actually just gets real at some point. You also have silence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, so you have three, right? Silence, circle, and regenerate. Oh, I thought there was one more for some reason. My bad. No, so you have three zero mana spells, you have radiant elementals, like you have Grave Horror for payoff and Lyra. Like Matt, I'm I'm sure there's like I'm sure you could build a Mechathune Druid deck, that, or a Mechathune Priest deck that's better than what it currently is, or you could just use, like, some sort of quick engine. Other that deck would want, like, Jade Idols, but rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah. let's look into one of my favorite cards of the set, Mass Hysteria. And also has great flavor text. 5 mana, force each minion to attack another random minion. So, I'm just going to take a moment to explain this to people, because I've seen a lot of confusion. Let's imagine I have three five fives in play, um, and I play Mass Hysteria. Um, two five fives will attack each other, and they'll both kill each other. Then there's one minion left that cannot kill something. It has nothing to attack, and it will survive. So if you ever have an odd amount of minions that all uh, have the same stats, one will survive. Um, and then there's scenarios where you play this card, and like, everything survives, depending on how your board lines up, especially if there's a lot of things that are like 4-8, you know, things with a lot more health than attack. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what will happen though is, if card, let's say we have four cards with random stats, if card 1 and 2 fight each other, and they both live, card 3 could fight card 1, 2, or 4, and then it might kill, if it fights card 1, it might kill card 1, and things like that. Um, so, so this doesn't wait. So, are you sure these don't fight happen at the same time? Like, they don't just get random targets because, like, two minions could attack the same minion, and then yes, it gets resolved simultaneously. It doesn't have to leave one minion not attacking anything. I th I think it's done like separately, but I'm not certain. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm not 100% on this card, so that makes it awkward to evaluate for me to evaluate it, yeah. So I'm just going to go out and say I think it's an 8-star card because it's a sweeper and uh, aggressive decks, uh, which is where you need sweepers. Oh, a lot of them have top-heavy attack values, which means that it should kill off things. I do think the really good players are going to make this card... Uh, if they're the priest player, they're going to make this card really good, and if they're the non-priest player, they're actually going to make this card a lot worse than it could be. I think this card makes people play in a really interesting way, and I love it. Um, it's kind of like Light Bomb was, where you had this weird AoE. Um, so, yeah, I think it's an 8-star card because it's a 5-mana sweeper and priest, and against Zagra, that's great. So, I think the card is really, really good. I think the card is pretty good i'm hesitant on random i'm also hesitant on not knowing exactly how this card resolves um priest already has a crazy good board sweeper with no condition although it is more expensive with psychic scream um this is an earlier game tool for them to handle the board although not consistently it's very much brawl in a lot of ways um I would really like to see and figure out the math on like the likelihood of getting kind of low rolled with mass hysteria, but I think that gets really convoluted really fast. Um, I'm going to give this card a six because I think it's a questionable sweeper uh, when they have a, a reliable sweeper already in their package, but it's definitely runnable and it's at a mana cost that priest needs to deal with minions, because Holy Nova just doesn't cut it anymore. Yeah, I'm not... I, I think 
how I rate this card definitely hinges on how the effect works. I'm not sure if every single minion gets, like I've been playing Artifact and everything, all the damage happens simultaneously, and so I'm not sure if it's like that where each minion will pick a minion it's going to deal damage to, and then boom, everything collides into each other, or if it's more like minion hit, then minion hit, then minion hit, and it goes down the line. It kind of seems like it's phrased, like... The only card I think that has any text remotely similar to this is Super Collider, right? Super Collider makes a minion uh, attack a, a, a random neighbor. Mm -hmm. and yep. He uses the word neighbor instead of random minion. But this is random minion. My stuff can hit his stuff. His stuff can hit his own stuff. This card, I think, is still going to kill on like boards of like four or more minions, it's almost always going to kill, like, at least two minions, I've got to assume. Possibly more than that, depending on how how big the the, the uh, toughness is on them. So, I really, it really just depends on how the card works, I think. I'm going to rate it a seven, because if it works the way I think it does, which is everything gets a target and the damage all happens at once, then it's a really, really strong card, and it's probably most of the time it's going to be an entire board clear even if you have nothing in play. But I also think it's a really interesting card because, like GHP pointed out, if it's... So I, it, if it happens one at a time, right, then it'll matter whether there's an odd or even amount of minions in play. Um, but you can have a little bit of control over that once you have more than five mana. You can potentially add minions to the board. So I think this card is potentially really, really good depending on how it actually works. It's the first card, I think, that's had this sort of effect. Alright, Spirit of the Dead. Uh, one mana, zero, three still for one turn. After a friendly minion dies, shuffle a one-cost copy of it into your deck. Um, to note, these count as cards that didn't start in your deck, by the way. I think. Uh, yep. Which is secretly crazy. I think this is one of these weird cards that... Um, like, it seems so deceptive, but there's so much combo potential with this card that, like, imagine if you just shuffle in a one-mana Prophet Villain. I'm pretty sure you just draw Prophet Villain or Maui and kill your opponent on the spot. I'm sure that's easy. And because of that, I think this card is deceptively good. Um, I'm going to say it's... 7, because I don't know what the deck looks like to make this happen, and I'm not sure any current deck wants it. But, um, although I heard somebody say they should play it in Cloning Gallery Priest. Um, because when all your shit dies, you just draw, like, fat top-end versions of stuff that are cheap. Which actually seems kind of cool. But, I think this card is just, like, so powerful that it has to be given a good rating, even though I have no idea where this card goes, or what the combos look like. I just know between this and the 8-drop we talked about earlier, there's a bunch of stupid things you can do, and because of that, you can't sleep on this card. I'm just too lazy to figure out what it looks like, so yeah, 7. Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said. Like, if you if you cast Cloning Gallery, and you get uh, this card, or you get, and you have this card on board, and you just, and you don't have the Wombo in your hand, you can just go crazy spin value and then slash or lash and then shuffle an insane amount of value minions into your deck. Now you have one mana Malagos and a one mana of Velen in your deck and like plus they died so they're in your pool to be resurrected. Um, being one mana, I think Spear of the Dead is super, super powerful. Definitely, in my opinion, one of the better spirits. Uh, it, it, in terms of power level and what it can do, it can enable so much. I'm going to give it a 7, although if it becomes in the right deck, I could think it can hit like a 9 level. It just it requires to be built around, and I don't know if we're quite there on this card yet, but it's it's very powerful. Yeah, I can't think of an immediate home for this card yet either. It it seems like it synergizes really well with the Resurrect Priest, but it also in itself is kind of a dilution to like the Spellstone mm -hmm. high rolls. So it's terrible with Spellstone, man. It's absolutely yeah. horrible with Spellstone. Actually. But if you play with the 
the nine drop spell with the cloning gallery um that's just really good value and actually you could potentially you know combo this card with one somdi and you know you you cloning I, I, i'm stretching it here but you cloning gallery this thing pops out with velen and mali goes they board clear because they have to it shuffles your zilliax and everything else and and then you one somdi and you just draw a full combo and, and kill them because you know, they're one mana <laughs> <laughs> That's insane, though. I mean, okay. Okay, it would be a way to also enable it so you um, draw or you draw seven cards because you'd play no one other one mana minions in your deck. And what you'd do is you'd, you'd draw the combo, but then in your hand, you'd be able to go Radiant Elemental, Radiant Elemental, Maui Velen for four mana. And then I'm sure you can deal like 100 damage. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah. Like, easily. Sure. <laughs> that might be like a convoluted thing to do, but like, yeah. and like, it might die with the deck too much because, like, if you hit uh, Coining Gallery on, uh, on like basically either of the two cards we need for our combo, or like, yeah, the seven drop, like, it's shit, but that I might mean, be it worth does, it. It does also sort of make your next copies of cloning gallery if you get them also better too because like it it adds more weapons in there that can pull one cost out of you can so like just... you can accidentally pull like multiple villains <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Like, insane, well, my, my blast is 40. <laughs> like i guess i guess <laughs> Yeah, like, I feel like they're... It enables some really silly stuff. But, to, like, with this combo, like, there might be a way to just do something broken. You could also play a card we're going to talk about later that lets you just, like, put a copy of a card into your hand. So, like, what you could do is get the copy card in your hand, cast your, your coin and gallery, and, like, just make a copy of the card that would let you draw the one minions, because you put a 1-1 one -one in play of it. Because your radiant elements was what you discard it, and then you've also drawn that piece of the combo. Like I know we're talking about something that's like way out there, but it exists and it kills people through like druid health. Like mm -hmm. that's one of the issues that combo priest has is the game, so they have to actually combo you to win instead of just casting shit against like druid. They often are like, I don't have enough damage. I only have like what is it, uh, like sixty eight damage, and that's not enough against druid. Well, I don't think. Uh... Have it, like I think the matchup is supposed to be more reliant on spell stones against. It players. is, yeah. You want to play the, you want to play the the thick boys. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we don't want to play this card and spell stone in the same deck. So. Yeah, that's another problem. Maybe yeah, there's a version without spell stone. Like you just build a full OTK list. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just an idea, but it's yeah. cool. I think the card's really cool. It's a cool card. What was uh, your guys' ratings? I'm going to rate it 8 out of 10. I don't know what you guys rated it, but I'm going to rate yeah, it 8. I think it's you and definitely I both... powerful. Yeah. I think you and I rated it 7G. Yes. Okay. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about an easier card to talk about now. Sand Drudge. 3 out of 3 2. Whenever you cast a spell, somebody will with zombie with taunt. I think this card is okay. It's a medium body with a medium effect. How are how good are priest 3 drops if you're in like a mid range match? It's a, or like if you're in like, um, or the problem is I want to play this card in Spiteful, and I can't play it in Spiteful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to play it in Control, because it's not high enough impact. And, like, my creatures are already, like, dragons. And there's no, like, benefit, like, imagine you're playing, I know this sounds weird, but some sort of storm strategy with, you know, your wyverns and shit. This isn't good because they don't. It's not like your board goes infinite. I have a feeling this card is just like a two star card that has no effect, even though it's not actually a bad card. It just doesn't do enough with how Hearthstone is currently designed. So yeah, I'm going two stars. I agree. I think it's like a, a kind of a neat value card in arena, and that's about it. Um, one ones with taunt are fairly irrelevant. Like, it's kind of a cool tool to get value against, like, Odd Paladin or something, but, like, what are you cycling to do that? Um, yeah, I don't really see where... All this card really does is make remind me how good Talon Priest was as a 3-drop. That was the 3-4 that gave plus 3 health? Yeah. That card was insane. 
Yeah, like when you look at it, when you compare the power of three drops, like this card is just like so woefully under that. It's insane. Um, I'm going to give it a. For constructed standard, I think two is a good place to put it. Um, it's not quite one, but it's a really good arena card. We don't talk about those here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of in the same boat. Like I don't think this this card's obviously like a strong defensive card in the we'll say like turns four through six, right? Where you can uh, I mean even like with the coin you could potentially play this and coin out powered shield and get two one one taunts, which is probably pretty decent against aggro. This will be a three five and you'll get two one one taunts, but that's the like absolute best case scenario. Um, <coughs> Priest has, for the longest time, kind of, it's always been a joke that Priest just does nothing until, like, turn 5, turn 4 or 5. Um, and I mean, literally do nothing, because, like, if your opponent deal, doesn't deal damage to you, your hero power doesn't even get any value. So, it's kind of nice that Priest has a 3-drop. A it's just uh, probably not good enough. Um, I think I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10, because it does have... Generous. Good it has good text, but like, yeah, it's definitely just not there. All right, let's talk about. It's an interesting card. Let's talk about a weird one. Two mana or science. Two mana. Choose a minion and a copy of your hand. So it's yours or your opponent's. To note, you're putting a card into your hand that didn't start uh, in your deck. Um, with this card, okay, I'm gonna say this very, very nicely. This card is so good that if you read this card and tell me it's bad, you don't have a very good understanding of how combo decks work in Hearthstone. This card is super powerful. The, now, I have no idea if it has a home, but if we're playing some OTK deck that uses the uh, card that puts cards into play that you didn't that didn't start in your hand, this card is a snap two of because like, oh, I'm just going to play my Velen and Seance. So now when I play that 8-drop, I get Velen plus some other things. This card is very, very powerful. I can also see times you go, okay, I'm going to take your, I don't know, which one, Grizzly. Or, you know, get a copy of it. And that'll help me stem the board. Like, that's so powerful that I think this is a eight-star card that we'll see play, not in every Priest deck, but in any deck that wants to do some stupid combo things with some of the new cards we've gotten. I don't have a ton to say. I don't think it's as good as you think it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> uh, it's 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 fine. It's better than the other horrible priest card that does a very similar effect. Um, priest has another card that's classic. That's two, but it's an opponent's minion. Now, obviously, that's way worse because it's not a minion you put in your deck. Therefore, you probably don't want it. Um, but with, what comes with Seance is the problem that in combo. You tend to want to have that combo initiator in your hand until you're ready to kill them. And this card makes you have to play that card. So you're just kind of like can tripping on your win con. Um, I'm not totally sold if that's good, really. Like on turn 10, you can do things like play Lich King, say on so I have another Lich King. That seems pretty solid. Um, but it's not mind blowing. It's like a decent value tool, but it requires a target on the board that's worth your time. Um, it does have more combo enabling than some other cards uh, that Priest had uh, that are similar to this, but I'm still not blown away by it. I'm going to give it a six because it can generate really good value. And I think that might be its best use than trying to combo with it. Yeah, what this card make? I mean, where I think this card is best suited to combo is with uh, Princess Talanji. But I think uh, you're putting a card in your deck that's sometimes going to be able to enable you to do things with one other card in your deck. And um, I'm just not, I'm not sure it's synergistic enough right now. Like, it's kind of slow to pay two mana to copy a thing and add it to your hand. And you're definitely never, almost never playing it earlier than, like, turn five, I would say. I mean, you can obviously copy 
whatever as a defensive play, a Stonehill defender, but that's not, then you're using the card not for its intended purpose, and it's really, really bad, I think. Um, I honestly think this card's like 5 out of 10. I don't, I don't think it immediately has a home, honestly. Um, it's just such a slow effect, and yeah, we've had we've had similar effects in the past. That even if you were to play this just for value, it just it never really feels good enough to play it as as value. So you have to have some sort of really powerful combos to convince me that this card is immediately powerful. And I'm just I'm thinking it's probably too slow to play like two of these on two different minions and then play play Princess Talanji. Just a little, a little asking for a little bit much, I think. Okay, let's talk about Regenerate. Zero mana, oh god, more zero mana cards, restore three health. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this card is great if we want to try an Auctioneer Priest, which I really do want to try at some point. Um, and if we compare this to Flashio or so out of play, which is one mana, restore five. Um, that card saw play both because of Dex playing Auchanite and because it was good if you needed the heal burst. This is good with Ark and I, um, and I've heard a lot of people mention what you can do is you can play Xerox Clothing Gallery, and you can go um, with the ro with Radiance Elementals and stuff, and hitting Ark and I in that combo, you can use Regenerate as a burn spell. Um, and I know there's a couple other combos, you can do it off Spellstone too, um, but... Generally speaking, I think this card is okay at best. I gotta say it's a five star card. It might be good in some combo decks. I think it might see some play in like some sort of control priest deck because it is like just another cheap spell for the deck, but I'm not convinced that it's actually like a good standalone card. Um although going turn four, Akunai, regenerate, kill something, have a three five is a really good tempo play. So maybe if we play Akanai, or if we play Akanai, uh, the 3 5 and the Akanai that we talked about earlier, maybe regenerates good enough in this just like tempo style deck. So, I mean, yeah, I'll say it's a five star card. That's fair. Yeah, I, I think regenerate, I think regenerate starts off at immediately as okay because it's zero. Like, it's immediately not costing me any mana to play this card, so I'm already pretty happy about it. Um, it combos really well with, like you said, with the, um, the new Phantasm and the Priest that reverses healing effects to damage. So it's a cute way to get an early, uh, removal spell effectively if you need to. It could be a spot heal. It's a very flexible card. The problem is, is, like, it just does a, it's, like, just not quite enough to be always relevant. Um, I'm going to put this card at a five as well because it only restores three health like three is just like it's just not quite enough for me to give it like uh i don't know if i would be able to slot it in my deck unless i was like mechathun trying to just dump or if i was playing auctioneer or something like that otherwise i don't see a lot of potential for the card Random question. If you're playing Mechathune Priest, um, are you willing to include like one of this card without Auctioneer just for a cheap Shadow Visions card? Because you always want your Shadow Visions to be able to hit a zero mana card sometimes. I mean, I think it's worth putting in an, in, a, in the Cthune deck because it's zero mana, so yeah. Okay, cool. Like it's, it's just a card you can cycle easily. And you can play it with like, Pyro and shit. It's actually insane with Pyro, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty darn good with Pyro, yeah. Cool. VT? Yeah, um, I mean, the card itself, all it does is restore three health. Um, if you valued one healing at one mana crystal, which you basically do because your hero power heals two for two mana crystals, this is worth uh, 1.5 mana. And uh, I just don't know if the effect is is strong enough. I also personally don't feel that healing for two is worth 1.5 mana. I think it's worth one mana, um, but it has to be two mana because it's your hero power. Otherwise, it'd be way too powerful. Um, so, yeah, this card's basically one mana's worth of value as zero mana, which is probably just not good enough to put in my deck, I think. I don't think I want 
a lot of decks just don't want one mana worth of value out of their cards. Like Northshire Cleric is a one mana card that can, you know, generate multiple other cards. But it is zero mana. <laughs> and because it's zero mana, it can combo with a number of things. You can just like you know, develop and play a Northshire and heal something to draw a card, or you can just use it to heal yourself, combos with Akanai. Um, it also happens to combo with the two drop we mentioned earlier, Akanai Phantasm. So I guess I'm, I'm going to give it a six. I, I'm actually pretty optimistic about this card. I think this card will see a little bit of play for sure. Um, I don't think it'll be a staple in, like, Control Priests as, like, extra heal and removal. But, um, you know, for, I, I'd like to be proven wrong, I think. <laughs> I think the card's pretty cool. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump into the Rogue cards. And I think Rogue got a really a bunch of cards that you're, we're all going to say needs more pirates, because we need more pirates uh, that are good. But the Rogue cards, I think, are really awesome in this set, like, design-wise. So, eight man, a Captain Hook Tusk. 8 mana, 6, 3 pirate. Holy crap, that's bad stats. Battle Cry, 7, 3 pirates in your deck, give them rush. Um, if the pirates were good, I would rate this as like a 7 or an 8 star card. But the pirates are so shit right now that I think this card is like 5 stars because it's it, there's no way you could convince me to play this right now because all the pirates are just so low value and it's weird to say but I really don't want to pay like 8 mana for a 6-3 plus pulling 3 pirates out of my deck even if they get rushed when the pirates are like 1 or 2 drops like I don't actually want to fatigue myself a lot of the time and, I, and like clearly you play this card in a slower deck and that deck might care somewhat about fatigue um, and, yeah, if we had a bunch of, like, good 5 and 6 mana pirates, and you just played this along, like, you know, other just rogue cards, like, in a, a Fendori Rider, or Fendori Strider, whatever it's called, um, deck, like, to some value deck, then maybe this is okay, but the pirates just don't exist, and they all have to be big. Pulling out, like, 3 South Sea Captains isn't good, unless it kills your opponent. So, yeah, uh, I'll go 5 stars. Okay. Um, I think this card is garbage. Uh, it's so eight mana for a six three. You touched on that. Um, to think of cards that had a stat line like that, what effect did they have? Can you uh, name any good cards? Hadronox. Do you understand? Hadronox is a yeah, Hadronox is such a swingy card, though. Like, it is, but, like, I don't know. If you compare the two effects, and, like, when you compare the two effects, I'm talking about, all right, let's look at the pirates we can pull in. Yeah. Um, they're garbage, like you said. So, like, these, I, I know they're very different cards, but it's the only card that has, like, any reflection of really bad stat value to their mana cost, to their effect, that I can think of. And... When you compare the two, I think Hook Tusk is just, like, obviously way worse. I think, like, if this card, if Hook Tusk had Rush as well, I think I would be more of a fan of it, because at least it did something the turn it came in. That'd be sweet, actually. That'd be fun. Um, yeah, but without it <laughs> itself never doing anything besides being a 6-3 and getting traded into Flame Imp or something stupid, like... I, I'm going to give this card a 2 because it has no good pirates to pull. And without good pirates, this is just like a really understated recruit effect. I've got the pirates pulled up in front of me right now. I'm looking at the most powerful pirates in all of Hearthstone. Oh boy. Uh, no, we're not evaluating wild. Oh no, I know that. That's okay, because you and I are like, we're not qualified. No. Um, so... Cursed Castaway is a card in standard, right? Is that the... That's the Rush Death Rattle Draw combo card from your deck? Yes. That's I okay. It's a 6-mana 5-3, but the Rush is redundant, right? Um, I think that's one of the highest value yep. um, ones. Mm -hmm. 
and then South Sea Captain, obviously. Yeah. Um, if you pull two of those out of your deck, it's extremely powerful. Because then the Captain, Captain Hook Tusk herself also gets the buff. Um, I don't think the pirates are quite good enough, to be honest. Uh, notable Nightmare Amalgam is a pirate. I thought that was pretty uh -huh. cool. Like, I actually don't think it's that hard to build a pirate deck. But I mean, like, if you're going to build pirates, it kind of looks like it needs to be a smorky deck. And uh, it's just not there yet. It doesn't yeah. have the... It's not there, I don't think. And, like, another big thing for me is a lot of good pirates also have um, battle cries. Yeah. So, you know, like, Captain Greenskin has a battle cry that you want to mm -hmm. play. Uh, Blood Sail Raider has a battle cry you really want it to trigger. Yep. Um, Cut Cutthroat Buccaneer. Yeah, like... These these are all cards that you kind of want to trigger the thing they're doing, the, their effect, and so this card removes that as well. Um, so not only are the pirates not great stat wise to be pulled out, a lot of them you don't want them to be pulled out. Some of the best pirates are all ones that have battle cry. So this card is just awkward and doesn't have like it's a good card without the tools to make it good. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't think I'd even play this card at seven mana. Yeah, me neither. That's like I, how bad. That's I, how bad I'd is, need sadly. six, and then I'm not sure the deck makes sense to build. Yeah. Then it would uh, be a matter okay. of the card being fine, but the deck being shit. I'm going to give it a four out of ten because this card could potentially be really good in at a later time. If we get some, some nutty pirates later on, so this card could be strong. Grow the shark. 5 mana 2 2 battle card, eat a minion in your deck and gain his stats. And by the way, it's a random minion. That's why I don't add the card to your hand. Now, I have a question. When it says eat a minion, does that pull the card from the deck? Yes, I believe so. It That's a downside. Out, and it's now. Like, in the card. So attached to this death rattle, yeah. Um. <laughs> so it's a 5 mana 2 2 that gets plus x, plus x, and. and Draws you a card upon dying. That's what it says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This card is just like shit. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so random. Like there's no way this is a good card. You think it's worse than Captain Hook Tusk though? I think Rogue got two shitty legendaries. What did I write? Mm -hmm. Captain Hook Tusk. Five. Oh, are you serious? That's Can what I? You said. I'm bringing it to a four. <laughs> Okay. And I'm gonna write Grow a four. I think okay. they're both just real. I no, you know what? This is worse than Grow or than Captain. He's a three. Really? Oh my god. Okay. I think the Captain could, ha if you printed a bunch of expensive good pirates, would be good. Grow, yeah. not so much. I think Grow is just one of these cards that sometimes you high roll and just eat like Deathwing, and you're like, "Oops, I made a five mana fourteen fourteen." And then sometimes you eat Firefly and have a 5 out of 3 4 that draws you Firefly. It's bad in fatigue. It's. The fact that it eats a Death Rattle doesn't mean it triggers the Death Rattle, sadly. I just think it's a shit card. Yeah, three stars. Um. I think the card's okay. It's not great. It has the ability to do things like eat a Cobalt Scalebane and then it's a 5 mana 7 7 and then it adds a Scalebane to your hand, which is pretty sweet. Um, as long as it eats something that's at least a 3-3 or more, it's good. And if he eats anything under that, it's bad, right? So, this is definitely like a mid-range rogue. Like, the first thought, I think a lot of people would look at this card and think, I guess maybe odd rogue, but there's too many one-drops to make this card good. So, like, uh, yeah, because that would be bad, right? 5 mana, 3-4 to get a Firefly, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, that sounds really bad. So I think I'm gonna give this card a five because if there's a bulkier odd rogue that that comes out of the mix, if it has bigger cards and maybe it's not odd rogue and it's just like a more mid rangey rogue that'll play maybe like the you know uh, the card that we're gonna discuss after this one that's in it as well. Um, maybe it has potential to be good because it's decent value, but it's not. It's not impressive and vulnerable to silence. So, so neither of you mentioned the card that I think enables this card more than any other card, and that is uh, Necrium Blade. I think that this card, oh. in like a mid-range or rogue list, actually 
is a really powerful hmm. like tempo play that you can immediately get the value out of by guaranteeing you get whatever mid you pull off of it with a vial. And if it lives another turn, then you have, um, or with blade, I mean. But if it lives a turn, you have the vial as well, which triggers it twice. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I'm actually going to bump my mode to a six because that's playable. So I'm going to not change my vote because of that because Myra is a card with a very similar style effect and uh, she she is pow more powerful than this card and sees no play. Or I think she's more powerful. Because you can get death rattles from death rattle minions that are like good death rattles that you don't want to put in your deck. Like the 6 mana 2-2 two, two, make a 7-7. Seven, seven. And you also get a copy of the card in your hand. So, yeah, I, I think this is worse than Myra's, and Myra doesn't see any play. I think it's what? just um, decent because it'll be a decent stat line. Like, I think this thing's oftentimes going to be like... Like, uh... Tyra mentioned the scale band. Like, if this is a 5 mana 7-7, seven, seven, and then you add another 5-5 five, five to your hand, like... That's really good value. Yeah. Or, Plus, what uh, you said you reminded me with all the, with the death rattle triggers that Rogue got. That made me like this card a little bit more. Yeah, they can like prep Necrium vial on it. Yeah. Because you can be proactive with it. That was my biggest problem: is you couldn't be proactive, but you can. Does this? I'm trying to think if this card um, does anything already in the Malagos shell, but I don't think so. Like, if you draw the Malagos, then this card's just stuck in your hand, and you need to play it. I'm I think done. this card's worse than Elven Minstrel in that deck. Yeah. And if you get silenced, you lose. But I mean, you can play it really safely. Sure, but it's actually really hard for Rogue uh, to kill their own minions when it has, like, the card will at minimum be, like, a 5-5 five -five in that deck. And that's actually really hard for Rogue to kill. But we don't need to kill it, we just need to trigger the death rattle. Yeah, and that's why like, it might not be able to use the vials, but I see the idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to rate the card a 5, because I'm not convinced it immediately slots into some sort of rogue list. There's no rogue list right now, I think it immediately goes into as a value card, but it's certainly interesting with, uh, with Necrium Blade. All right. That's the first card that came to mind when I saw it. Gurubashi Hypemon. Five, uh, seven mana, five seven. Battlecry. I discover a one one copy of a Battlecry minion. It costs one. So it's discover a uh, a one mana one one Battlecry minion. Um, I mean this card can go infinite winky face. Um, I think the the opening body of this card is just so weak. So I'm at a 5-7, it's just really underwhelming, and I don't think this effect makes up for it, even though it's card advantage. Um, I'm sure there's some good battle cries you can hit. Like, I don't know, Alex Straza, but I really don't see this card seeing much play. I just, I don't think the effect is that good. There's a lot of battle cries, and a lot of shitty ones. So, I'm going to rate this 4 stars because the card is cool. But it is powerful. It's just I just don't see it being powerful enough. I agree. I think this card's really awkwardly statted. I don't think many decks are gonna one that want to run a card like this as seven mana. Like seven mana is a lot in Hearthstone, and particularly in constructed play. And if like think of all the things decks are doing on turn seven, if this is what you're doing, I feel like that's not good enough. Um, things. I, one thing I'll definitely mention is this can get you, uh, or has a good chance of getting you Grawl. And what Grawl card? as a one-man oh. one, one is really, really good. Yeah. Um, that's probably my favorite thing about this card, but besides that, seven mana is too much for a deck to just discover a rando battle cry minion, probably, so I'm going to give it a four, just it costs too much. My explanation is going to start with um, if you are familiar with the Hearthstone card Shadowcaster. Uh, that was one of my favorite cards ever printed in Hearthstone. Um, which like had a battle cry that gave you a 1-1 one -one copy of a minion in play. Um, so it's a little bit different because you get to choose the minion because uh, it's one that you put in your deck. 
um, also it kind of went infinite with itself. But this card is extremely expensive for the cost. I don't think the average battle cry in Hearthstone makes up for the fact that this card is seven mana. I might play this card at six mana, maybe. It'd be a little bit more like reasonable stat line, I think, but seven mana for a five seven is just kind of a big tempo loss, and I don't think the average battle cry that you discover will make up for that. So I'm gonna rate this like I mean for constructed play, this is like three out of ten. Like this will almost never see play. But it's not a terrible card. Alright. Cannon Barrage. Deal three to a random enemy repeat for each of your pirates. So the best case scenario is this is six mana, DO three damage to seven random enemies. Um well you know what? No, it's it's eight actually, I believe. Uh, for each, you're right. So it's, yeah, it's DR3 to eight random enemies, and it can hit the same thing, because it's basically just recasting the card. Um, mm -hmm. it's not three different. Um, if it was always six mana DR3 to, uh, DR3 eight times, I would say it's an okay card. Because the fact that it's definitely not, pirates currently suck, and this isn't anywhere near good enough payoff. I think this is a a, a three star card that's just I, no. It's a two star card that's just going to see no play. I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about it. I would be willing to give it two star if <laughs> hook tusk didn't suck seven mana and you could hook tusk prep cannon barrage. That would be powerful because he's a pirate, so it'd be you'd have that's fifteen damage. Yeah, that's okay. That's yeah, fair. But since you can't do that, which would be like the only remotely good thing you can do with Cannon Barrage, um, I'm going to give it a one star. I I think competitively, this is the worst card <laughs> in the class, in class based cards, I think, besides maybe the Paladin 5 drop. Um, yeah, one star is bad. I probably won't ever play it. Wait, what paladin spell? Holy Wrath? Dude? Not spell, the uh, the weapon, the five drop. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think the weapon's better than this. Like, Holy Wrath is busted. <laughs> <laughs> it's 25 damage, easy peasy. Yeah, Juchi, yeah, what do you with think? The pal with the new paladin legendary. <laughs> um, this card is really, really bad. Um, you guys said it pretty well. Um, Are you joining Team One Star? Maybe they'll, maybe they'll uh, reprint patches. Omega lol. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'll rate this card a one. If my opponent somehow found a way to shuffle this card into my deck, I would be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> I, It'd be worse to drag Baku. I'd be so sad if I drew six mana and deal three damage. Um, and yeah, random like, damage. It's like to a random, random target too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Alright, let's talk about something that only is worth talking about. Yeah, it's Spirit yeah. of the Shark. Four meta, that's a lot. Zero three. Well, rest in peace, Void Ripper. So, for one turn, your minions, battle cries, and combos trigger twice. So, the one thing to know is triggers twice is always awkward because, for example, you can't go uh, turn four this, turn five, like, I don't know, coin, vile, spy, and kill two things. It doesn't work that way. They always have the same target, and a lot of the things that matter in rogue or target cards. I know, like SI, you could kill a vial spine with it now. But this is one of these cards that's so powerful, but doesn't fit with the rogue identity at all. Even though I know it's still a combo, but it doesn't actually work very well. Triggering twice isn't actually that good a lot of the time in um, in rogue. It's not death rattles, which would be the best one. It's battle cries and combos. So because of that, I'm gonna rate this a five star curve because it's powerful, but I don't actually think it's gonna see any play. Um I think it's not as good as it looks because of the reason you said there's a couple of combo cards that kind of fizzle on it. Um but I also think that a lot of the important combo cards don't fizzle on it, and that's cold blood. Oh, um, <laughs> That's um, 
the uh, I guess it's not that relevant, but the classic combo two two minion that makes two ones. You have battle cries, but battle cries are almost always good. Um, that we can trigger with this. Yeah, they're in your deck for a reason. Yeah, so th I think this card's insanely powerful for Rogue. Um, it's definitely, it creates the option of creating a, a crazy powerful turn. I I, I kind of wish I prepped and had a list of all the combo cards available to me. Um, but just because this, like, turns Cold Blood into, like, an insanity. <laughs> That's so and, stupid. Yeah, and then you have Ringleader, and then you have which is like, eh. But then you have, like you said, SI agent. You know, that's double. Fungal is dumb. Yeah, fungal is crazy dumb. Um, Minstrel draws you four cards. Foul Dory Strider, shuffle six. Uh, this all sounds really, really good and a lot of stuff that Rogue wants to do. So maybe like Tempo Rogue? Um, I think Miracle Rogue. Or yeah, or, or like whatever the deck is called. Yeah, the one with you know Striders and the three four for three that sh shuffles in twice and. Yeah, that 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 deck wants this card bad, and because of that, I'm going to give it an. I think this card's an eight because it's not in every rogue deck, but the rogues that play this card, this card is going to be devastating. Oh, I'm a big fan of this card. I, um, if it costs one less mana, it would probably be too good. <laughs> oh, like, definitely. Like I, I feel like it was play tested at three mana. Um, yeah, it, it's called Brent Bronze Beard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, and that card was really, really good. Yeah. Like, yeah, super good. Played in everything for the most part. So, what do you think, uh, GT? This card is just like out of the ballpark i think like it's super cool super awesome like powerful card like you your, your opponent is super scared when you play this card even though it's four mana to do nothing right your opponent's gonna look at it and go wrong i'm gonna die next turn um, i hate you i'm gonna kill you with my minions and yeah you're gonna do something really dumb on the following turn um because it includes battle cries and combos, I think it's just really, really powerful. Um, I, I there's too many battle cries to name, but so many of them um, are already pretty decent value on the cards you play them on. So getting double the value just is really powerful. If you ever p get like two triggers off this, I think it's just absolutely insane. And then yeah, like you mentioned, the existence of cold blood just actually makes this like. A ton of damage, honestly. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we could OTK. Probably. I mean, Leroy plus two Cold Bloods with this card is already 14 damage. Just set this thing no. up and turn ahead of time. Yeah, that's 22 with that card. Yeah, so, there's probably a combo six, that's six, like... Oh, yeah, I only counted one, yeah. yeah. So you'd to, but you'd have to prep one of them. Well, so you could go... Prep with this card in, ten, with, in one turn, even without Spirit on the board prior, you could do 22 damage. Wait, what? It, how much damage is South Sea ca You play this so you have 6 mana left. Then you go South Sea Captain, Cobalt, Cobalt, so that's 10, uh, that's plus 16, so that's 18. Mm -hmm. Abusive Sergeant is worth 4, right? In this case. Mm -hmm. So that's 22. Second Abusive is 26, and you have 1 mana left. Do we have one mana deal four somehow here uh we can deal three and hit him with a sinister strike and hit yeah. our face <laughs> like we're, yeah actually that's that's lethal yeah that's a that's like, a one turn otk and it's probably not the best way to do it but it's efficient no, it's a thing like we could just think of it up in our head in two minutes on this on this recording then that says something with the power level and we just named a bunch of like solid cards too like yeah that deck could just yeah that's cool I'm gonna rate it a uh, seven out of ten because I'm not necessarily convinced it's worth the tempo loss. Like I could see this card being like a one of in Miracle Rogue, and they just use it to get the extra damage out of Cold Bloods. This card is essentially like four mana eight burst damage with yeah. with double Cold Blood, right? I think so Miracle wants it. So I think yeah, maybe Miracle wants it as a one of, and I, you know what I. I'm so hesitant to rate this an eight because it's such a huge tempo loss at four mana. Like four mana is huge. 
So yeah, seven out of ten. I'm I gonna. Really want this card to be good, but I, I don't. I don't think it's immediately good in every road deck. You know. I'm gonna go to seven now that I realize that cold board works. Nice. That changes everything to me. Let's talk about raiding party. Three mana draw two pirates from deck combo and a weapon. So if it's just this, it's three mana draw two pirates. If it's not, it's three mana draw three cards basically. Um, I think right now this card wouldn't see any play because of the quality of the pirates. But assuming we get pirates in future sets, I think this card is insane in that deck. So I'm gonna rate this as a eight star card. Because I think it's absurdly powerful, and I suspect it will see play post rotation with more pirates. And, like, it doesn't take a ton of pirates for this to be a good card. And getting a weapon is, like, flavor text, and if you get it, it's insane. But you don't have to. So, yeah, I think this card's great. I think this card is okay. It's... Arcane Intellect, but sometimes it does a little bit more if you played other things. Um, so it's like average statted in the terms of what you're drawing normally without the combo. With the combo, it's a little bit more. I also don't know what weapon we necessarily want to draw in this pirate deck. Um, I mean, I guess you know we'll talk about the, the cheap mana weapon for Rogue later, but overall, I'm not really thrilled about drawing a weapon with this card, so it's more like Pirate Arcane Intellect to me. And right now, I think that's super, super bad. In the future, it might be a little bit better, but I think it, at best it can go from really bad to playable, so I'm going to give it a 4 for now. Alright. What a big um, gap. What did you rate this card, JSP? 8. And Tyrant said four. Yeah. All right. So, um, the first thing I think of any time I look at any rogue spell is preparation. So, right. This card is absurdly powerful with preparation. If we had like more aggressively statted pirates, right? Like you could go turn one, play a South Sea deck hand and prep this out, and then turn two, you could have a weapon and another pirate and be pushing like a decent amount of damage. Um, also, one of the big things that aggro decks are always lacking is card draw, and this is a uh, straight-up card draw. Um, and I'm not saying that you can go put just this card and preps in your deck and have it be good in your, in your, in your pirate deck. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, <laughs> but... You know, there are super terrible pirates, like, out right now, if you look at the curve, like, Dread Corsair combined with, like, Blood Cell Raider and a weapon that you tempo out can actually be, like, a pretty aggressive curve, I think. And, um, this card gets you two pirates and a weapon. Um, I just think right now, the synergy is definitely not there. Like, like I said, I got the pirates pulled up in front of me on my other monitor, and the synergy is not there yet. Um, but I think this card has a lot of potential. I'm going to rate it five, uh, 5 out of 10. Because I think in the future it could be strong. The only thing, like, this card is really strong to prep out. But I don't think you're putting prep in a deck that has this card. Because it's going to be full of a bunch of other pirates. And, you know, cards that you're not going to be prepping out. So, that's kind of like a nombo there. Sometimes you end up with prep in your hand and you lose. Um... And if I was to play this on turn three just to draw two cards, then yeah, it's valued at Arcane Intellect, which is kind of a big tempo loss. So I think this card scales really well if we get some more powerful early pirates in the future. I'd also like to say Nando is one of my favorite terms ever now. Yeah? Yeah, I love <laughs> it. From now on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but so how are? So it's a two meta war with Rush. That's a said start battle cry and plus one plus one for each other pirate you control so if you are ahead with pirates this card is very good at keeping the board but does nothing if you're behind um i think this is an okay pirate card obviously we've already agreed that we don't have enough pirates that are good to make this card good it's also one of these pirates that mentioner who's very very reliant on actually a, having a good battle cry so like putting it into play somehow is really bad 
Overall, I think if we had a, 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 a lot of cheap pirates that we could play in this deck, this card would see play in it. But it, the more I think about it, I think if we have a bunch of cheap pirates, we just wouldn't play uh, the the captain. Yeah. Um, so if we ignore that card, like, this is a good card if we have a bunch of, like, one and two meta pirates. Um, hashtag please bring back patches. Um, but I don't think it's, like... Anywhere near busted. I think it's a six star card. I think if there was an aggressive pirate deck, you'd play two of it, but it's not a reason to play pirates either. Yeah, I agree. I, I would actually rate this card lower than a six if we didn't have Spirit of the Shark because Spirit of the Shark can actually oh, yeah. be kind of silly. Yeah. Um, and like it can just turn it into like a two mana eight eight with Rush, and that's pretty bonkers. Um, but it takes a lot of synergy to be made good. And it also needs good pirates to uh, be worth playing, and we lack that. I agree with you at a six, because I think this card is actually very good, but it has nothing to support it. So it ends up probably not seeing a lot of play. Oh, um, uh, of note, I was forgetting that uh, we kind of have been like, bashing the crap out of the, the pirate synergy, right? Um, there is actually, like, one neutral pirate that I think uh, is worth mentioning, at least while we're going over what is these, these, these pirate cards. Sharkfin Fan. Mm -hmm. uh, two mana, two, two, after your hero attacks, summon a one, one pirate. Right, that card's uh, also a pirate, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good so, one. So that one actually synergizes quite, quite well with the Blood Cell Howler. Yeah. Um, you can actually have a pretty strong tempo turn if you already had a weapon equipped, either through, you know, drawing it with Raiding Party or your Hero Power. And, you know, yeah, maybe you Hero Power, and then you Spirit of the Shark, and then you're like, Shark Fin Swing, Blood Seal Howler, let's go. And uh, you, you get him, dude. You get him. Uh, that would be pretty neato. I hope it's on Trollden. Um, but I, I think we're still... Even even with the existence of that card, I don't think we're quite there yet. Rush is a nice text on this card, and it can be a pretty big tempo swing. I think this probably needs to be at least a 4-4 four, four before I'm really happy. Like, a 3-3 three, three is two, okay. A 2-3-3 three, three, three rush is definitely okay. But I have to put a... It's not a 2-3-3 three, three rush, simply yeah. because I have to... You know, have a board state that makes it good, actually. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, that's the same if it scales up anymore. So, I want to say 5 out of 10. I don't think this card's immediately playable. And I think it's really hard to get enough value out of it to make it playable. So, I just don't think it's going to see any play. But I think, you know, it has some value with Spirit of the Shark. And obviously scales if we get better pirates. All right, box the uh, point. Do you have a number for that? I didn't, I didn't oh. hear it. Five, five out of ten. Five, gotcha. Yeah. So if we walk the plank, four mana destroyed a damage menu. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it, okay. It's removal spell on the for. It's removal spell if your opponent played the card this turn, basically. And. I'm not convinced that that's actually, like, that powerful to do. So, like, Vile Spine is good, um, f because it also puts a body in, but I don't know if I'd play 4 mana Conditional Assassinate right now. Before you, before you just murder the card, just, like, know if the preparation exists. Oh, I was about to bring out Prep, bud. Okay. Prep, Prep makes this card a little bit more interesting. Um, that's, like, for sure. Um, but I'm not, I don't know if that's enough to actually make the card good. It's okay, it does some powerful things. Um, it kills things. But, I don't think, um, obviously, okay. They've given us some pushes to try to play even rogue, and I don't think that deck is going to be good. Um, and I don't think this would make that deck, although it would lose vile spine, so it might feel forced to play this, but then you might be playing a bad deck. Um, and I think any deck that's playing, like, get, I don't think Miracle Rogue wants this card, 
because they already have Vio and they already have other removal. Like, that deck chooses not to play Eviscerate, man. Or some play Eviscerate, not all. Like, and Eviscerate's a lot cheaper and normally kills everything that the Rogue deck actually cares about. And that deck also plays Sap if it's for, like, Void Ward, so... Or, I, I don't think this card's great. I'm gonna give it a 5 just because it's... Like, it's often unconditional removal, but I just don't think it's that good. I think it's fine. <laughs> like, it's okay. I think it's like a card that really belongs in like a classic set. It's simple. It's easy to understand. It's new player friendly. It's not overpowered. Um, I'm gonna give it a five, or yeah, I'm gonna give it a five as well. It's it's um, amazingly mediocre. I think that the ceiling for this uh, card is pretty high, right? Four mana. Yeah, you could just hit Maui. Uh, and I think that preparation existing makes this card um, a really big tempo swing. Like, if we're thinking that getting a 3-4 and killing something for 5 is really strong. Uh, and, like, it, it, the problem with, like, comparing it to Bioswine, right, is that Bioswine kind of requires two cards in the sense that you need a combo enabler, but you get something out of the other card. What Prep does is discount the card. So, at one mana, this card is a huge tempo swing. I think, like, I think I'm going to rate this card a six only because I think it's extremely powerful with, like, specifically Gadgets and Auctioneer. Like, I could see a Miracle List just loving to sandbag uh, an auctioneer or even a coin with auctioneer and go like auctioneer coin prep this thing or even just wait till turn seven and prep this out um it's just a really big tempo swing with preparation i think and uh you know if the rogue decks can keep up card advantage and also have like a a finisher that's consistent you know like with leroy and cold bloods then uh i think i think this card could find a home in a deck like that Outside of that, I don't think this card's very good. I would like to see it see play, but if if I don't if I didn't see prep assassinate before, I don't know if I'll see prep prep walk. For but sure, that makes I sense. would like to see it play. You know, I was okay. thinking about maybe like the Mali Rogue one card just to beat. Maybe, it, yeah. But it I might mean, just yeah. water. You also have sat. It, but the fact that it's just yeah, remove. It says four mana kill a thing, which you know against some decks is going to be time walk. So yeah. I'll, I'll give it a six. I'll give it a chance. A really Fair. small chance. <laughs> All right, stone steel. Two mana. Discover one from another class. Um, Boom. I I adore the card. It's probably my favorite <laughs> card, but that's because I love cards like art? this. Yeah, the art's cool. Um, I think it's probably a five star card. I think it just it has some really high upside and some really like okay. It's four is okay. Its ceiling is absurd. But there's so many weapons, and there's so many weapons that are lackluster that, like, there's actually a pretty good chance that you just get shit. So, I'm actually going to rate this four stars. I think the card's cool, but I don't actually expect much from it. Maybe it goes in Tess Rogue, but that's also a, a four star deck, you know? I'm going to give this dart a one. <laughs> I, think I think it's garbage. <laughs> I think it's two mana discover a weapon and, that you don't want to play. And most of the time, like, the best weapons you can get, like, oftentimes, like, the, what you can all get offered are cards that don't get synergized with you. Really heavy cost weapons that Rogue doesn't want to be dealing with. Rogue wants to play multiple spells a turn. It doesn't want to pay six mana to whip a... Like a... A Valonir? Like sure. Like, I don't think Rogue wants a Valonir. Like, I don't think, like, Val, like, yeah, most Rogue decks, uh, at least a Rogue deck running this card probably doesn't want a Valonir. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think if it wants to run uh, its own weapon, it runs Kingsbane. Otherwise, it just hits Hero Power and plays Poison. So, one star for me. I think, uh, with this, this, this art and this, this dude, um, you know, honestly, depending on what class your opponent's in, there's some high rolls and there's some low rolls. It doesn't care um, about what class your opponent is. 
Yeah. Oh, it's just another class. Yeah, it's yeah. a oh, weapon oh, from any oh, other class. Sorry, I'm so used to rogue stealing stuff. Though. Yeah, so it's, it's also just weird. A yeah, weapon. but they want to make it so. Okay. I guess if that you. It makes it so much worse because there's so many bad weapons in the game. Exactly. Um, I I think. <laughs> what was that? I think it's one star, dude. Okay. I'm not gonna pay two mana for this card. <laughs> All right, let's I finish. Zero, I might pay zero mana for this card. I might. Let's Maybe. finish. Uh, let's finish the rogue cards because we've been doing this for almost four and a half hours, and we're sixty cards in. Yeah, are we? Are we so bad? I mean, the neutralist was a lot of crap, at least. Uh, Serrated tooth. One mana, one three. Death Red will give you minions rush. So. When I first saw this card, I thought it was okay in Miracle Rogue because you could just hit spiders and stuff. And then I realized I was just being a high roller. This is a two star card, and the only reason it's not a one star is because giving shit rush could sometimes be absurd, aka how Master Shaw. But yeah, I think this card's crap. Next card. <laughs> Did you say one? Two. Two, okay. Um, I think it's a three star card. And that's because it might see play if, like, aggro rogue with the pirate fan and going crazy and playing Blood Sail Howler becomes a legitimate, like, all-in super aggressive strategy that would help you board control against decks like Odd Paladin and things like that. Um, it's also just, like, a decent statted weapon. A one-mana, one-three weapon is, is, like, fine on its own. And it has a good death rattle. Uh, so, like, value-wise, it's good. I just don't see the place in it. Like, it's like a one-attack weapon that, in a class that has a hero power that does that. So that's a little awkward. Yeah, I mean, I'm not super impressed with the card. It's cheap and easy to play. And then, like, maybe Deadly Poison. Like, I think this card's decent because of Deadly Poison. But you'd have to be playing it in a normal rogue list you already have your hero power, you're probably too tight on cards to actually fit this card in your deck. Um, I think I'm going to rate it 3 out of 10 because a 1-mana one 1-3 one, weapon can only actually be so bad. That's actually like pretty decent. Um, but it's just not something Rogue wants specifically. So I'll give it a 3. Uh, the Death Rattle is kind of nifty, I suppose. <laughs> I'm not really sure how applicable it can ever be. It's really, uh, really slow on a 1-3 weapon also. All right, so we're 60 cards in out of 135. Let's not make this take nine hours, right? 